architect that builds software, uh, as Dan mentioned. Um, thanks for having me. Nice to see everybody. Um, so uh, I like to actually just say, or I prefer to be able to say that I'm an architect, um, but it's sort of an unconventional thing to be an architect that builds software. Uh, but I would argue that software sort of serves the same role that buildings did in the ancient world, right? They shape the way that we think. So what I want to talk about is why anyone even really cares about the decentralized web or the distributed web in the first place, um, and just give some kind of like design thinking to, you know, why, why is this an interesting question? Like, what can we do here um, that might lead us to a fruitful or sort of large-scale change? So I would contend that most existing infrastructure that supports human culture is already decentralized. And the simplest example of this, I think, is the city itself, right? The city is the product of many different uh, separately controlled but interacting systems that produce the spaces where we communicate with people, where we do business, um, where we conduct our lives, right? So another example would be, sort of disparate example would be markets, right? So the market itself has lots of physical infrastructure that allows people to come together to exchange goods. Those people have different competing interests. Um, and we think of these kind of decentralized systems, or I think when you think about them, they're really important to how human culture works. So let's back up for one second and be clear about, or clear and maybe deliberately vague about what we mean by the web, because it's kind of, a, it's kind of an open-ended term, right? So when I talk about the web, I'm talking about the whole stack, like from the actual physical hardware running in a data center all the way through to the UI, like to the phone in your pocket, the thing that you interact with. Um, and I think you can think about this in a pretty simple sense. It's just the technology that expands this, that supports, excuse me, that supports this vast expanse of human knowledge and interaction, right? It's become kind of a diffuse thing, and uh, we don't need to think too seriously about its components' parts when we use the things that we communicate with. Um, but it's actually pretty complicated, right? Everything from these pictures behind glass to, you know, whatever is being computed in a data center somewhere. So like Gavin, I like to uh, look backwards in order to look forward. Uh, and I think that it's important to keep in mind that at some point, we're going to look back at 2017, and it's going to look like this. Like, it's going to look really silly. And uh, so if you're thinking about where we're headed, um, you want to keep, keep that thought in mind, right? Like, the way that we do things now are not permanent. Um, so if we want to know where we're going, the way I like to think about it is to look at existing robust human systems and think about the properties that they have and try and apply them to the systems that we use now. So do the systems we use now kind of abide by the rules of how we have built cities, how we have built long-standing human institutions? Because I think that's kind of the way to think about why do we care about the distributed web in the first place. So let's talk about some of these properties. What, how are these things, you know, usually like, what are, what are the sort of basic design principles behind them? So I think it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, or there are sort of three main ones that we'll step through. In general, they tend to be loosely coupled, so their parts are not closely connected. They're made of pretty simple parts. And most importantly, you can trust those individual parts. You don't question whether or not you trust the parts that are involved. So first, let's talk about trust. Um, I, did quite a lot of research on this one. It was pretty difficult, but this is the original Dropbox. Um, here we have the original Juicero, pretty hard to find. Uh, and this is actually the original Evernote. Um, I believe pretty strongly that trust is the most important design consideration. When people really trust the objects that they use, they can engage with them very deeply and they can rely on them very heavily. And the only way that we build trust in the systems that we use is if we can really explore them. Like, we have to be, feel like we're not going to break something or we're not going to do something wrong uh, when we're um, you know, using a mortar and pestle, for example. When we look at these ancient objects, it's immediately obvious what they do. But I don't think that's true for your average web app. So let's try and apply this thinking to you know, uh, pick any app on your phone, right? So the first question I always ask is, someone recommends that I use even Signal. OK, so I download and install Signal. How do I intuitively sense something about the system security? When I send a message out across the network, 
do I have any intuitive way of knowing how many people are gonna look at this thing that I just sent? How many servers does it touch? How many other people potentially are going to inspect it? Like, how can I have some kind of deep understanding of that? So we all agree that uh, automatic updates are great, but uh, I just updated my phone and now I don't know how to use it. So that's a problem. Um, the other thing that tends to be a problem with apps is that they often die with the data trapped inside of them, right? People are coming up with new things that we can do all of the time, and when that company goes away, our data dies with it. Um, so I don't know if anyone else has had this problem, but uh, occasionally you'll find that a family member might uh, post something publicly that they probably intended to send you in a private message. So I think UI remains kind of an open problem. It's not easy to build simple UI, and it's e it is actually very easy to make people do things accidentally uh, that they don't intend to do. So I would say we're not doing great as far as trust is concerned. It's an open question that we can build uh, digital systems that we can trust extremely deeply, that we can rely on very, very heavily, that's still being developed as far as, like, the, web is is, as far as the web is concerned. So let's talk about loose coupling, which is kind of a vague term. Um, but we can put it in pretty concrete terms. So through the mid-century, there was this uh, series of houses called the case study houses, um, which a bunch of Southern California architects worked on as a kind of response to the post-war housing problem. Um, in this set of houses, so this is case study house number eight. This is the Eames house, very famous piece of architecture. You can go visit it still, and I recommend that you do. It's great. Um, what I think these houses uh, pulled off very well is that they turned the house into kind of a tool for living. And I think pretty much all of sort of post-war housing is designed in this way, right? You can move the furniture around. You decide what rugs to put on the floor. You design how the kitchen is arranged and so on. And, and basically, ordinary people with loosely coupled parts can be very creative. And we, I think we all tend to agree that's a really great thing. Um, but is that really true in the digital systems we use? So we agree on the first point, And we can think of a simple example, like, our power outlets, although we can put furniture in front of them, they don't, my power outlets don't decide that I have to have like a certain kind of chair, right? But the digital homes that we inhabit are really not so flexible, right? I can't send a Facebook message to someone on Twitter. I mean, I have no idea why these systems don't interoperate, except for the fact that they're competing businesses. So I uh, may discover something like uh, Quip or, um, Notion, or you know, pick a web app that's a great new document editing tool. Turns out, uh, can't turn that into plain text, can't move it. Uh, so these systems like, are total, very tightly coupled, right? They're the whole stack, all the way from UI to the way that my data is stored. I mean, they're cool, I enjoy using them, but they don't really like, abide by this sort of basic design principle that the user should be able to recompose the parts of the object. I experienced this problem, and I think this problem is especially bad. It's like egregiously bad with hardware. So I don't really see myself using Nest with uh, some other server, right? I can't keep track of my own thermostat data. I can't program the way that my home uh, uh, controls its temperature, right? So let's talk about simple components. We might have, right now we have complicated components <laughs> that, are, uh, that are tightly coupled, right? But most of human history, we managed to pull it off with uh, something that looked like this and maybe a measuring tool that looked like this. And this is actually a time measuring device from Peru. The nice thing about simple tools is that they can be used together in complicated ways. So we know that pens don't really have compatibility issues with paper. And for like many thousands of years, that's really important, right? You can do unpredictable things with you know, a collection of, loose, of, of very simple objects to produce some new output. So this one, I think, is actually, like, maybe not even solved even close, right? I, I'm not sure that we even ha we have any kind of simple tool uh, in the digital world. Um, and it's kind of a difficult problem to think about. So one thing that I always think should be simple is task management. It's the simple, like, we all need to keep track of what we need to do, and we need to communicate and coordinate with other people about what needs to get done. But every task management tool I've ever used is, like, it must be, like, millions of lines of code. They're so complicated. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, 
you know, Unix actually does capture some of the spirit of this kind of tooling, uh, but you know, it's not for everybody. It's a little bit uh, maybe culturally specific, but I don't see everybody using the kind of uh, like command line text editors that are actually kind of simple, um, but somehow they don't have, you know, we, we, we don't see everybody using them. Um, and again, in, in the hardware case, um, the coupling between the physical, uh, you know, the whatever it is that I'm interacting with in the car itself, the thing that appears on the screen and whatever servers, you know, Audi is running is like completely inseparable. Like that entire stack is totally tightly coupled. I'd be very surprised if it even works in like five years. So as far as I'm concerned, we live in a world where our interactions with technology are pretty narrow. Um, you know, most of it is kind of like pictures behind glass where you have kind of single purpose uh, interactions where each individual piece of technology is this, the entire stack that's very tightly coupled. That is that we have tools that are closed, we can't inspect their parts, so it's very difficult to trust them. Um, they're monolithic, so we can't actually use them together. We can't arrange how they interact with each other. And they're so overly specialized that it's very difficult to, again, to use them in concert, right? And so going back all the way to the beginning, the thing is that if you look at the web stack, you look at this collection of har all the way from hardware through the protocols up to the UI, most of the bottom part of that stack is ancient. It's ancient and it's very tightly coupled to every other layer in the stack. So when you think about why do people want to decentralize the web, what they want to do is basically start to build better infrastructure at the bottom layer so we can see better solutions, more humane solutions get built on top. So hopefully that gives you some framework for how to think about why we want to do this at all. And if you want to talk about specific sort of strategies and what people are doing in this regard, then uh, you come talk to me. Thanks.